wet fly this week called the Big Meadow has a couple of interesting uh, aspects to it. It's similar to the Governor, which I, I did last week, in that it's a peacock curl body. The hackle on it's just a brown hen hackle. This one does have a mylar tag and a uh, tail to it, scarlet tail, and a mallard wing to it. This week I'm actually going to use the uh, regular mallard flank feathers and explain those a little bit and show you how to actually match up and make a couple of matched slips uh, for the wing. So that's the big meadow. We'll go ahead and get started. Start the big meadow by placing my hook in the vise. This is a must add 3399. It's a very traditional, uh, common wet fly hook. This is in a size 8. I'll debar the hook and attach my thread. Now, since I don't have any floss or anything on this fly, I'm just going to go ahead and use a, a black Danville 6 aught. I'm going to attach my thread about an eye length behind the eye of the hook. I'm going to run my thread down along the hook shank to the point of the hook. Here I'm going to tie in the tag on this. The tag is a gold tinsel. I'm using a Danville's Mylar tinsel. This is in a size 16 and 18. To tie this in so that the silver side is up, bring it under the thread and around to my side of the hook, and then I will pull the rest of the mylar to the left so that the tip of that just sticks out underneath the thread. I'll advance my thread down the hook shank about six turns. This is going to put me right in between the point of the hook and the barb, which is where I want the body to start. Or I should say the body to end. Turning the hook over, I'll start to pull to wrap that tinsel in. It'll flip over the gold side. I'll put in about six wraps going down the hook shank, touching turns, and then I'm going to put in about six wraps coming back up. This just gives me a nice solid gold tag on the end of the fly. I get back to where I started. I'll just secure that tinsel. Again, because this is not a floss body on this, it's a peacock curl. I don't have to be so concerned about keeping everything really nice and smooth in the body. So I'm just going to clip that mylar right there at the end of the body. That will get wrapped in and uh, be hidden just fine. Now the tail on this is a scarlet you could use uh, duck quill if you want, or even rooster hackle uh, barbs if you want. Um, I'm going to use some goose shoulder. This is just some red dyed goose shoulder. I'm going to cut out a slip from the left and the right. And I'm going to tie that in so it's about, I like them a little bit longer. I'll go maybe from right behind the eye of the hook to the bend of the hook. Tie that in, securing that all the way down to the end of the body, right to the beginning of that tag, so that my first wraps of peacock curl will cover up any thread wraps. I'll trim this the length of the body. The body on the Big Meadow is peacock curl, and I'm just using some strong peacock curl here. I'm going to get about four, maybe five strands. It just depends on how thick you want the body to be. And it also really kind of depends on how full the hurl is. If the hurl is kind of, especially with the strung stuff, it tends to get knocked around. Sometimes the, uh, 
the barbules on the, the hurl isn't as thick as you want it. So this time I'm going to go with five. I'm going to trim these so that almost all of the white ends right here are removed. I can leave a little bit on there because as I tie this in, I want the tips to go the length of the body. Just adds a little bit more bulk under there and keeps it smooth. So those white, what's left of um, any, any white sections right here along that barb will be wrapped in and disappeared. have to worry about keeping things super smooth with the hurl body but this is a matter of exercise I do that anyway so when I'm working on other wet flies um, that's what I do and keeps that skill going sometimes in wrapping that in thread torque can twist the tail you might notice here it's not quite running straight down the body it's been twisted over a little bit at this point just go ahead and pinch those thread wraps and move that back just a little bit. Um, it's easier than, than doing it when you've got the, uh, the hurl. If the hurl's on there and you do that, you can mash it up a little bit. So now I'm gonna go ahead and wrap that hurl in, getting my first wrap right at the back to cover up any thread wraps and then advance forward to make the body and I'll stop about an eye length behind the eye of the hook. I'll wrap forward wrapping down to the eye and back. This just smooths it off for the wing and the hackle on this. The big meadow, similar to the governor, which I did before, has a wing on it. And this one's made out of mallard flank. And it has a hackle that's just wrapped around as a collar instead of um, what a lot of people consider a more traditional throat on a wet fly. Now the mallard flank, and this is part of the reason I chose this fly. I did a fly a couple weeks ago, the, the Blue Professor. Mallard flank can be really tough for a lot of people, especially beginning tires, to kind of understand. In that video, I mentioned that the mallard flank feathers that you get in a big package of mallard flank from uh, various uh, manufacturers and, and fly shops isn't generally true mallard flank. This is a genuine ma uh, mallard flank feather. It's much broader, much bigger. Occasionally in those packages, you'll get a few of these in there, but mostly you're getting breast and or uh, belly feathers. The thing with the mallard flank feathers is, is that you get a distinctive right and left. So as you can see, not only the way the, the feathers curve, but the way they're grown out on this side here, as well as this side right here, they're very distinctive. And that's what we're looking for. If we want to make a really nice uh, mallard flank slip wing, matched wing for this, the mallard flank that you get in those bags just really doesn't cut it. You have to get the larger genuine mallard flank feathers. So what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna strip a lot of the fluff off here you don't need these hackles, or I should say these barbs right here. They're too, too soft. We're looking for the ones with the nice straight edge and, uh, and much denser. So we'll just strip those off and even cut the end of that off if you don't want it. So now we have this cleaned up and it is much more prepared for our, to make our wing. I'll go ahead and cut some of those fibers out. I'm going to leave them attached for now. And then I'm going to do the same for this feather. I like to clean up both sides just to get, even though I may not for this fly be using these barbs right here, 
um, I clean those up. Just they have their uses, and so in the future, I'll have some that are already cleaned up. So just like the other feather, I'm going to I'm prepping the feather a little bit here. Sometimes the barbules, I should say the barbs, get um, mashed or split, pulled apart. Um, if you do this, you're basically zipping up the barbules on those so that it brings the, the barbs all back together. But I will prep this the same. Now I'm going to take, I'm not certain if you can see this here, but I'm going to take the one side off of that feather. This is why I left them um, joined to the feather, because then I can just match up the tips right here, hold them down, pull it right off, and I have a nice slip of matched mallard for the wing. I've got a couple of the thinner barbs right here that are kind of sticking out. Don't have to, but I'm going to pull those out just for looks. In terms of fishing the fly, I don't think it's that important. I'm going to tie these in. I want the tips to pretty much be about halfway down the tail. Here's the only other part that at least I have a little bit of difficulty with is when I bring these down in, as you can see, what tends to happen is everything gets pulled down into a V. And I don't know if it's because of the peacock hurl behind it, but the wing, instead of the wing being down like this and looking very really nice and streamlined with the fly, it tends to go up more at a about a 40 degree or so and be cock, cocked up. I, I don't know. Uh, working on that, doing a little bit of research on how to um, help those to get tied in a little bit better. But that is your matched mallard flank. Trim away the butt ends, and then I'm wrapping in the butt ends of mallard flank, making a nice platform for the hackle. Hackle on this is just a, a brown hackle. You could use a dry fly hackle, rooster hackle if you want. I'm using, um, I'm gonna use just a hen. That one's a little bit big right there. Going to peel away the longer fibers on the butt end of that, and then using my hackle pliers, I'll clip the tip of that so that I can stroke back those fibers and get them out of the way. And then that gives me the very tip of that. I can cut that off. It just gives me a nice little anchor to tie that feather in, to anchor it down to the fly. Tie that right in. I'm going to wrap that down pretty well. I'm going to leave my thread right back at the back of the head. And then I'll palmer this feather in two, maybe three times. Probably three. I'll probably use the whole feather so that in the video here you can see uh, the collars a little bit more pronounced. If it's too thin, even though it's just uh, two wraps, it may be enough for fishing the fly, but it may not look that full on the screen. See, that's just two wraps there. So I'll throw in a third just to make it look a little bit fuller. And really, I find that this is actually up to your taste. If you like your collars to be a little fuller, then go ahead. If you don't, then uh, wrap a little bit less. Use rooster if you like them to be a little stiffer. I like on these wet flies the collars to have a little bit more action and life to them, so that's why I like to use the hen. I'm going to build out the head here. 
and then put in a seven, six or seven turn whip finish. Break away my thread. Actually, it does happen sometimes. I just wanted to trim that away, but tightening it down, it broke. And then we'll put a little bit of head cement on both sides. And that will be ready for some lacquer here in just a minute to finish it off. I'll put two coats of black lacquer on that and the big meadow is done. So again, mostly wanted to show uh, the mallard wing on this. Like I said, the blue professor, I showed a different way of getting that wing uh, by using the feathers that you get in a package of what are called mallard flank. But this actually is using you know, the, the actual flank feathers, which are, are broader and wider. Not the best wing in the world. Uh, I'm still working on that and figuring out how to get the, consistently get the profile I'm looking for. But that's the big meadow. And thanks for watching. Thanks for joining me at Device today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help Dressed Irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, and you're doing it wrong. <laughs>